We're going to take a look right now at the shape of the earth, how we know what the shape is, and also how we can navigate around the world and find our location using the coordinate system uh, with latitude and longitude. So first of all, the shape of the earth. It's called an oblate spheroid. Um, it's not a perfect sphere. Oblate spheroid means that it's a little bit rounder around the middle than it is on the top. And um, so if you were to measure from the North Pole to the South Pole, it would be a smaller distance than to measure around the equator. Now this difference is not visible to the naked eye. If you think about a picture that you've seen of the Earth from space, it looks like it's a perfect circle. But when we actually measure it, there is a slight difference um, around the equator than from the North Pole to the South Pole. So that's why we call it the oblate spheroid. Okay, so again, it's not something that we can see just by looking. So if you were to make a model of the Earth, it would look pretty much round, okay? Um, but the technical term is an oblate spheroid. Now, evidence for the, the shape of the Earth. How do we know that it is round? Okay. Well, first of all, you think about when you go to the lake or the ocean, um, when you watch a ship sailing off into the sunset, okay, it looks like it's sinking. All right, so you've got your little ship, a little later, oh look, it's smaller, and then, oh no, ah. all right, there's nothing there except for the sail. The ship is not sinking, okay, because what else do you notice? You notice that it's getting smaller too, and that is because it's getting farther away, and it's curving, it's following the curve of the earth. If the earth wasn't round, you wouldn't see that, okay? Um, but the curve of the earth gives it that sinking appearance, okay? So ships sailing towards the horizon appear to sink as they follow the curve of the earth. And this was one of the first things that got people thinking about the idea that the earth is in fact round and not flat. Some other evidence, Polaris, all right, Polaris is the North Star and a really good snowmobile um, compared to other brands like maybe Arctic Cat or Skidoo. Um, but anyway, so when you change your latitude, okay, what also changes is the position of Polaris in the sky, all right. If we take a look right here, you're standing outside, you look up in the sky and you see Polaris. You can use this instrument called a sextant and that measures the angle of the star above the horizon. Okay, it just kind of measures how you are looking straight up in the sky. Um, and say that with that instrument, you see that this angle is 40 degrees. If the angle of Polaris above the horizon is 40 degrees, okay, that means the observer's latitude is also 40 degrees. All right. Um, I can't really quite see that. Huh? Get down a little. There we go, okay? So if we take a look at the North Pole, if you are standing at the North Pole, the top of the Earth, and you look directly above you, okay, you will see Polaris. It's the North Star. And that angle above the horizon is a 90 degree angle. So you know that you are at the North Pole. You're at 90 degrees north. If you're at the equator, okay, right here, it's directly above the horizon, or excuse me, it's right on the horizon. And so it's not any degrees above the horizon, it's at zero, you're at zero degrees latitude. And then this last one here, okay, kind of low here, but that says 30 degrees. If the person sees that the, the Polaris is 30 degrees above the horizon, they are at 30 degrees north. Okay, so this number right here, this angle, is always equal to the latitude. Um, and one thing you need to keep in mind, notice how that says north, that says north, that says north, because you're using Polaris, the north star, to figure out where you are. Okay, you can't see Polaris in the southern hemisphere. Once you pass the equator into the southern hemisphere, you can't see Polaris, so you can't use it to navigate, you can't use it to figure out your latitude. So you're only gonna have a compass direction for any of these uh, latitudes when you're using Polaris, your only compass direction will be north, okay? So this is kind of a big concept that we're gonna come back to a lot and you may wanna come back and watch this again because it is a big, um, big piece of information. That angle, 40 degrees, is equal to your latitude.
okay? And you can use it the opposite way, all right? If you know you're at 40 degrees north latitude and you're trying to find Polaris in the sky, you know that it's going to be 40 degrees above the horizon. So it changes with your latitude. All right. Now, okay, so those are all evidences that the Earth is round. Some other things here, okay? Mapping the Earth, figuring out where are we on Earth. This whole thing right here is a grid system using latitude and longitude. The Earth is broken into a grid system of latitude and longitude to find exact locations. All right, if you're out in the woods hiking and you break your leg, Okay, and you're trying to get help to you, you can you somehow have cell service, and you say, yeah, I'm in the woods. They're like, well, where are you? Well, if you have a GPS, which a lot of phones have now, you can pinpoint exactly where you are with coordinates. You can use latitude and longitude, tell the, the uh, person at 911 where you are exactly so that you can get help to you as soon as possible. And, you know, so latitude and longitude is kind of a useful thing to know how to use. Now, latitude, all right? Latitude is going to be going like this, right here, across. Here's your equator at zero degrees. Here's your longitude line of zero degrees, which is the prime meridian. Okay. Um, to read this, all right, everything below the equator is south. Everything above it is north. Everything to the left of zero degrees longitude is west everything this way is east. So if we've got this point right here, it says it's 20 degrees south and 10 degrees uh, west. Well, let's look at that, okay? First, latitude, you come down, you look right here. Oh, 20 degrees south. That's always gonna go first with latitude. And then longitude, we go up and down, and we can see that, oh, we're 10 degrees west. All right, so that would be the coordinate you would give, 20 degrees south, 10 degrees west. And that helps pinpoint. If you just said 20 degrees south, okay, that's anywhere around the world at 20 degrees south. That doesn't really narrow things down much, okay? So if you give your longitude, now you know are you in the western or the eastern hemisphere, all right? Now, longitude, I mean, you guys have heard degrees before, but we can break it down even further, all right? So units of longitude, all right, you've got degrees right there, but we can break that down into minutes. And then we can go even further down into seconds. So this would be an example of a longitude right here, 75 degrees, 30 minutes. And that right there is the unit or the symbol that we use for minutes, and then 45 seconds. The little quotes there is what we use for seconds, all right? And then west. So that is how we would write out a coordinate system or a setup for coordinates. And um, the way you have to think about this is time. All right, how many minutes are in, a de in, in an hour? There are 60 minutes in an hour. All right, so there are 60 minutes in a degree. You can take a minute and break that down into 60 seconds. So that's why it goes degrees, minutes, seconds. So the highest that you can go is gonna be 59 minutes or seconds before you hit the next, before it turns over into the next degree. Okay, so we're going to definitely practice that a lot in class because this is a big concept. You have to know how to read latitude and longitude. All right, right here, a little bit more about latitude. Okay, they are parallel lines, meaning they never touch, and they measure the distances north and south of the equator. So here's the equator. If we take a look at that, okay you're noticing the lines, yes, they're running this way, okay, but they're measuring where are you in relation to the equator. So you've got right here, here's zero degrees, then 30 north, 60 north, 90 north, and then below it, 30 south, 60 south, 90 south. So this is how the lines of latitude run, okay? You can kind of think about it like rungs on a ladder, latitude, you're climbing up the ladder. Okay, that is one way that some people remember latitude from longitude. And one other thing we talked about just a minute ago. Again, you can figure out your latitude by using Polaris. All right, if you see Polaris 43 degrees above the horizon, you know that you're at 43 degrees north.
Now longitude obviously is going to run the other way. These are imaginary lines that measure the distance east and west of zero degrees longitude or what we call the prime meridian. Now the latitude lines never touch each other. The prime meridian and all of the lines of longitude meet at the poles. Okay, can, you can see how it kind of looks like a basketball. Um, they meet right at the top and the bottom. They do touch at those points. So here's zero degrees, the prime meridian, and then going that way would be west, and that way is east. So this is the western hemisphere, this is the eastern hemisphere. And the prime meridian passes through a town in England called Greenwich, England, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later when we get into time zones. Um, but this is what the lines of longitude are going to look like, and they're measuring east and west of the prime meridian. And you need to combine both latitude and longitude to figure out an exact location. Um, so we'll definitely, like I said, practice this a lot more in class, figuring out how to write it and also how to find points on a map with latitude and longitude.